Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I come to you today with a bit of a homeschool check-in, homeschool update. I regularly share homeschool content here on my channel, and so you see kind of us homeschooling in action during our day in the life videos, but I like to once in a while just do a little check-in and let you guys know uh, from my point of view how our school year is going. So at this point, we are about six weeks into the school year. If you are new here to my channel, by the way, my name is Julie. I do have five children, and the kids that I am homeschooling are in sixth grade, fourth grade, third grade, and in first grade. If you are new here, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and stick around so you can see all of my content as it comes out. I do a lot of large family, homeschooling, and food content, so I hope that you will stick around. I'd love to have you here. So this homeschooling year, this is my eighth year of homeschooling. I would say that our year is off to a good start. Uh, I feel like it's taken us a little while to get going and I think that's just because uh, we've had a holiday, we had Thanksgiving here, and we also took a week off. We went on a week vacation and of course with leaving and then coming home, we took a little bit over a week off of school. So we are six weeks in even though I feel like we should be further in, but because of vacations and stuff, I still feel like we are just starting our, our school year. So first I'll just kind of go through our curriculum, what we're doing this year, and let you know how that is working for us. Well, let me just go through our school day. So we'll start at the beginning. One new thing I implemented a couple weeks into the school year, I started implementing this, and that is morning exercises. So at nine o'clock, we start school but the first thing we do is morning exercises. So I turn on a YouTube channel. We've done a few different things. The channel that we use the most is called Dojo Go. I will link that down below in the description. It's karate lessons, it's a 15 minute video. I screen mirror off my phone onto our TV and the kids do this morning workout. This has been so good for us for a few reasons, I guess I would say. Uh, number one, it gets those morning wiggles out. It gets the kids active to start off our day. Number two, it gives me a few minutes to kind of regroup and be ready for the school day. So we're kind of doing chores and all that stuff in the morning breakfast. When they come to the living room to start the school day, I will like tie up any loose ends, do a last minute kitchen cleanup, pour myself a coffee. It just gives me an extra few quiet minutes. The third reason I love this is that it is motivation for the kids to be done their chores and ready for school. So typically if I would say, okay, it's nine o'clock, we need to start school. Um, I mean, I hope that the kids will work fast and be ready for school, but rushing to start school, um, I hope I'm not the only one in this, in this boat where uh, that's not something that the kids love to get started on. Like, yeah, let's start school. I mean, they're okay with school, but it's not something that they absolutely love. But they love their morning workouts. And so if they are behind on their chores or they're being pokey and they miss the workout, they are not happy about that. So it's motivation to be done their chores, done brushing their teeth, and everything and ready for school. Next we do our Bible time and I have shared in the past this Bible curriculum I have put together for this year. There's a lot of memorization and that has been great. I am really enjoying the Bible curriculum this year. It's been really good for us. Uh, another thing we do with Bible time is we're reading through the Psalms and so we go around myself and the three oldest and we read through a chapter in the Bible every morning, a chapter or two, and it's so good, so good for me to hear the kids reading, especially my older ones. I don't hear them read very often. They do their independent reading, but I'm not listening to them read. And so that's been really good that I can correct them where need be, help them with pronunciation of words, remind them to slow down. Some of my kids are fast readers and they will mix up their words or they will skip words. So it's been really good for me to hear them read and help them out where needed. Of course, we do our read aloud time as well. We have read through, I believe, three books so far, and that is such 
such a good way to start our school days. We really enjoy the read aloud time and we have enjoyed the books we've done so far. We read Best Family Ever by Karen Kingsbury and then we read two uh, Trailblazer books. Those are Missionary Stories by Dave and Netta Jackson. We have of course been doing the Gather Round curriculum. That is a unit study approach. So I have a teacher's guide. I print it all up. I do the teacher's guide and each of my kids has their own level workbook that they're working through. We love the unit studies. We've been loving Gather Round. Uh, we completed the Canadian Government Unit, which was a really good one to do to start off our school year. It was a mini unit, so it was still 20 lessons like every unit, but the mini part of it was just that the kids only had two work pages to do every day unlike the other units where they would have four or five work pages to do. So that was kind of an easier kind of easing in to the school year. As far as that unit goes, uh, I think it was really good. Not surprisingly, a lot of it did go over my third and fourth child's heads. Even my older two, they got most of it. But I mean, it's about elections and about how government works. So it's a lot of information. My younger ones, I just don't mind. If they don't grasp it all, it's fine. But I am enjoying, now that we're getting into the North America unit, I am enjoying that they grasp so much more and they are really absorbing a lot of information. So I would say overall, this North America unit seems like it will be a more enjoyable unit for for everybody. With that Canadian government unit, one thing that was nice is because it was a mini unit, it didn't take quite as much time. And so we added writing on every single day. So I got my kids each a handwriting without tears writing book at the beginning of the school year. And I figured that we would just do this some days. With the mini unit, we were able to tag that on at the end every single day, which was nice. My kids have been working on their cursive, and so it was nice to add that on to our school days as well. We have been using handwriting without tears since we started homeschooling, and we have really enjoyed that curriculum. As far as our schedule goes, after gather round and writing every day, we do a break. So it's a 15, 20, maybe even 30, depending on the day, minute break. And I send the kids all outside. If they want to sit and read or if they want to run and jump and play, whatever they want to do out there is okay. But they all go outside, it gives me a little bit of a catch up time. I usually have a little cleanup to do or I'll do lunch prep or like emails or phone calls or whatever. Sometimes I will just go outside and get some fresh air as well. But we always have a break there. And then everyone comes in and we do math. So as far as math curriculum goes, my oldest three are doing teaching textbooks. My third child is in third grade. So this is his first year using teaching textbooks. So the teaching textbooks program now works on tablets and phones as well as your computer. So he does his math on the iPad. My two oldest use our desktop computer and our laptop. Everyone's doing math at the same time. Now that the three of them are doing this independent curriculum, it does give me more time to, or not more time, but it frees me up a little bit to work with Zara, my first grader who is doing the Matthew C curriculum. She of course still needs a lot of assistance and needs me there to help her read the questions and just help her a bit with those math problems. So now that I can totally focus on her while my three oldest are all doing teaching textbooks, I love that. My third grader who has just started using teaching textbooks has um, adjusted very well. I do like him to be sitting with the tablet beside me at the kitchen table so that I can kind of help him out where needed. But he is really enjoying this math program and I love that it is marked automatically on the computer and that I don't need to be marking math problems because with this many kids that can get to be a lot and very time consuming. So all that to say, we are still very happy with teaching textbooks and we also still love Matthew C for the early grades. The lunch hour and after always just seems to be a little bit of a crazy chaotic time for me, for all of us. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. It's been like that for a while and I don't think I'm doing anything wrong or I don't think there's anything really to fix. It's just that everybody has their individual subjects and we're all doing different things. So let me just say, so our morning basket time, our gather round time, our math time, it's very like organized, I guess, and we're all together. We're all doing that subject together, but then we have lunch. 
Each of the kids has a different chore to do around lunchtime. And then they have piano practice, which has to be like one kid at a time doing piano. We have typing, we have reading time, and I teach Zara her reading lesson. And then I have my, my toddler who's just finishing lunch and kind of getting ready for nap time. And it's just kind of everybody is everywhere and trying to keep everybody going on their individual subjects, going on their chores and, you know, scheduling everybody when they should be at the piano and everything. It's just a little bit hectic and I think that's just what it is. I mean, it's not bad. I do have time set out like this is when you're practicing the piano and it's just me running around making sure, okay, you're doing this subject. You are finishing drying the dishes and you are doing this and putting Wesley for his nap and all that. It's just a little bit crazy, but it's okay because as soon as we get over that, it is quiet time and my youngest still naps. Everybody kind of goes for just a quiet time, whether it's in their rooms or outside. They're quietly playing with Lego or they're sitting and drawing or they're reading a book and they're just having quiet time, which gives me a quiet time. And so I really look forward to that every day. This is quiet time right now. This is what I'm doing. I'm usually editing a video or filming. That's how I spend my hour, hour and a half of quiet time. But yes, that is a very important part of our day. Even though my oldest is 11, he's running outside playing right now, but he knows don't bug mom. <laughs> um, this is my quiet time. I tell my kids uh, I need quiet time as much or more than they do. I'm just looking at my notes here. Another thing I wanted to say about the lunch hour is that we have also been doing an audiobook at lunch. So I have the Hoopla app, I also have the Libby app, and I will have a book on there for the kids to listen to and I will play that through lunch most days. And that, again, I don't think I'm alone in this. Sometimes when you're with the kids all morning and then at lunch everyone wants to talk and there's so many questions and sometimes I'm like, okay, let's just have a quiet lunch. And so I will turn on a book. The kids are all pretty interested in the book that is playing and it allows us just to have a little bit more of a peaceful lunch time. As far as homeschooling with a toddler slash preschooler, now that Wesley is three, I feel like mm, he's not really a toddler anymore. He is more into that preschool age. So homeschooling with a young one, always makes things interesting, makes things a little bit more complicated. I will say though, Wesley, now that he is three, he is so good. For one, he's just such a good kid. He's very good at independent play. And so homeschooling with him for the most part has not, okay, in the past it was, okay? When he was one, when he was two, like last school year, it was a lot. But this year, I'm talking about this year, um, it hasn't really been much trouble. Unless he's really tired or having a clingy day, he will just play quietly. He will often come to the table where we are doing schoolwork and he'll want to color or he'll want to play with Play-Doh. He does still have a fairly short attention span, so it's a lot of like, oh, he's doing this. Okay, now he wants to play Play-Doh. Now he wants me to get out markers for him. Now he wants this. And so it's a lot of switching from one thing to the next, but he has been really good during our school days. And now that I think of it, it's crazy because this is my last year without him actually being in school. Next year he will be junior kindergarten age, so not doing much school at all. But still, it's crazy to think this is my last year of having a little one um, not in school. Okay, let me just stop and think about this for a minute. That's crazy. I almost have all of my kids doing school. So in general, our days at home, our school days when we're, when we're home, it's just a normal school day are going very well. Not perfect, there's always some hiccup in the day, but for the most part, our days are going smoothly. It's mostly when we have something else going on, like we're going out for during the day for haircuts, or we're going to go out to the library, or we have appointments, or anything like that that gets thrown into our days. I just need to figure out my expectation for those days. I am bad with um, thinking, okay, we're gonna be gone for this amount of time, so when we're home, we can get this, 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 and this done. And if the day went perfectly, yes, we could fit all of those things in, but then we never do. The kids are a little bit pokier than I think they should be, or there are some extra distractions, or the appointment took longer than I thought it would, and it just ends up that I'm frustrated and we're not getting as much done as I thought we should. So I am working on 
those days where we have something going on rather than thinking, okay, we can, we can, if we are working quickly, we can get all these things done. I, instead I'm thinking, okay, we're going to do some reading, maybe do a page of writing and do our read aloud. I'm not worried about getting math done. I'm not worried about all these other subjects. So instead of trying to get the most things done that we can, just kind of lower expectations on those days where something else is going on because it's fine we don't need to get every single subject done those days I just think oh we could we could do it and then end up being frustrated when we don't so I'm lowering my expectations on those busy days so I guess all that to say we are having a good school year uh, I don't have any problems with any of our curriculum. We're happy with what we're using. Our schedule is working quite well. And I have a good little preschooler. I guess that's my message from this video. So I hope you guys are having a good school year as well. Let me know down in the comments below how your school year is going, what curriculum you're using. Let's just start up some conversations. I love chatting with you guys. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.